In the previous episode, you've seen me work in the older parts of the garden where I removed lots of the overgrown plants, reset them, and stuck them right back in. However, if you look closely, you would see that I didn't do this for all of the plants in there. Some plants are still leggy, and I've been holding back, thinking that there must be something else I could do in this area. Part of me wants to revamp the mound. I originally worked on that spot in summer almost two years ago. time, I had no specific design or direction in mind. All I wanted to do was to have this overflow space where I could stick in all of the cuttings that I have and let them grow. Now flash forward a year later, I decided to move out this large bowl because it was originally in a spot where it can't get enough sunlight so the plants on the bowl were starting to stretch out. It was looking alright for the first several months, but recently when the ground cover started to take over the place, it's looking a lot messy. Because of that, I'm now rethinking what I want to do with that spot, and part of me wants to remove all of the ground cover in there and replace them with large rosettes like the imbricata. The way I picture it in my mind's eye, it looks alright. I might run into the same problem of etiolation on one side, but we'll see. Maybe if I space them enough and maybe stick in smaller rosettes in between, then it might work. Now that of course raises another problem, a space problem. And the question now is where am I going to relocate the ground cover and all of those other plants in there? And this reminded me that I did start working on an overflow area right at the very back of our property. Right now I just have plants randomly stuck on the ground in there and I think that spot would benefit from a little bit of reorganizing. The more that I look at that corner, the more I think it is a perfect spot for my propagations, especially the seedlings and the cuttings that have already grown a bit. So I started thinking, what if I reorganize the whole thing, remove the existing plants and create a raised bed, put some dividers, you know. So if I create this raised planters along the fence, I end up having a self-contained space for the cuttings and I won't have to worry about them overgrowing or taking over a spot because they would be contained into little pods. But before I start working on that project, it requires a bit of planning and the first step in every plan is to gather as much information as you can. To that end, I decided to drop by Bunnings. I went straight to the building and trade section went through the aisles towards the timber section. I think I found it. In my mind's eye, I had this idea of creating a retaining wall planter, but I was not yet sure how much the materials cost, so I had a peek at the available systems they have here in Bunnings. They had quite a selection, and from what I saw, the timber sleeper system comes in two flavors. The first one would be the 50 mil, and the second would be 75 millimeters in width and thickness. Of course, the 50 mil system would be cheaper, not a lot, but they do add up. So I'm thinking that 50 mil is enough, especially since I'm just going to use this as a garden bed. Nothing fancy. So I took note of all of the prices and left the timber section. Of 
course, no trip to Bunnings is complete without visiting the nursery. Lucky for me, there's nothing calling out my name, so I'm safe. I know there's going to be a lot of hauling and lifting work for me, especially once I actually work on the retaining wall, which means I didn't come home empty-handed, literally. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So far, I've got one piece of information that I need, and that would be the cost of the materials. But in order to know how much of the materials I actually need, I need to know and mark out the areas that I'm going to be working on. I have a couple of options. The first option is to go that length of the fence, so create a bed this wide. And my other option is to go this along this side. Each side has a different cost associated to it. It's just by looking at it, you could definitely tell that this side is going to be smaller than if I work on this other side here. Let's go take some measurements. So from the far side over to this side, I've got about 2.6 to 2.7 meters of space that I could use. Now for the width, I got about 1.5 meters worth of space. So it looks like I have 2.7 by 1.5 meters of working space. So it appears that on this side, I've got about 4.5 to 1.5 meters of working space. Now let's do a bit of planning. Now imagine this is the plot. This is the corner that I'm working on. I've got about... So these are my options. The larger plot is 4.5 by 1.5. Well, the other one is 2.7 by 1.5. And the way I'm building it is that I'm not going to make them flush along the fence because otherwise that would be... Because that means placing an unnecessary amount of strain on the fence. And I don't want the fence to be compromised. So what I'm going to do is create a little gap at the back. So I'll be doing a, a proper rectangular planter with a little bit of gap behind it. Another thing I'm trying to decide is whether I should be using a full width of the space. Having a 1.5 meter wide plot would not work for me because it would be really hard to get to the back portion. So instead, I'm going to work on a half, half meter, something like this. I also have to think about the height. I could go for the highest height, which is 11, 1.1 meters. And if I do that, there'd be the least amount of strain on my back when I do intend to start planting. But unfortunately, that means that the volume of soil that I would need to fill up the area, to fill up the planter, would be more. Another thing to consider is that this is the west fence in our property, and this is the north, which means that since we are in the southern hemisphere, this part would be mostly shaded. It might be ideal for the ground cover or for the sea dooms. But for other plants, not so much because there would be too little sunlight for them. Doing it along this side of the fence though would mean more sunlight. And that would allow me to place my cuttings and my echeveras here as well. Because right now, they're just littered all over the place. At the moment, it looks like I'm leaning towards this side of the fence. 
I might do something here as well. I think I'll sleep on it first. Now, part of me wants to create a two-level planter, so the highest, the highest tier would be at the back, then another level would be in front. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, given the materials that I'm using. Because the thing is, the, the supports for the sleepers only comes in two configurations. Well, three, if you consider the ends. First one would be, of course, the ends. Second would be a straight connector, where it connects two opposite sleepers. And the third configuration would be the corner. Unfortunately, there's no configuration for a three-way, which was what I was hoping to be able to find. So instead, I would need to improvise. While I was taking more time to think about it, I went back to the corner for another look, and it seems like I forgot about the tree stump that was embedded in the corner. I'm not sure if it's something that I could remove, and it looks like it would take a lot of effort to remove it. But if I were to avoid this tree stump, then I only have about 3.5 meters of usable space. That's still pretty decent. Now if I take this stump into consideration, I'm now thinking of doing two tiers over at this side, taking the longer fence, and by my estimations, I could fit a half meter lot over here. Then I could put an offset and start further out. That way I could avoid this stump and create another planter in that space for another half meter. Now with that in mind, I can have two rows. The first row would be flush against the edge, against the corner. The second row would start somewhere here, which allows me to avoid the stump. Having figured out the area I'm covering from here to here, the next decision that I have to make is the height. There are three different heights for the retaining uprights. There's the 1100 meters, the 750 meters, and the 450 meters. Now of course, part of those would be buried under the soil. Each of the pine sleeper is about 200 millimeter in width. So that means if I go three sleepers high, that means that's 600 millimeter above the ground. Going three levels is the most costly, but, but I think it's totally worth it. So the first layer would be three levels high, followed by another layer, which is only two levels high. Having worked out the area and the height, I now need to compute the perimeter as that would tell me how much of the timber I would need to get. I'm going to stop it right there because I haven't worked out the perimeter that I'll be enclosing yet and that mainly depends on the finalized layout or design that I'm going for. Right now, I'm trying to gather my thoughts and I'm going to sleep on it. So if you stick around for the next episode, you will see what I end up doing. Thank you to my Patreon sponsors, that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camille Narvaez, Linda, Tom, and everyone else. Your support allows me to work on builds like these. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any future episodes of Let's Plant. And also you would know what to decide to do next. You could also check out Seriscapades at Instagram. I post a photo of an Echeveria plant every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. 